Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Dickinson. Uh, for those of you who sit in my MP3672 class, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, the, the frustration of playing around, trying to make them, them blasted dog bones work happily in the design modeler in ANSYS was quite frustrating and, and sending me insane in many ways. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through the process of actually making the dog bone. Um, we're going to use a different approach. Uh, we're going to use a little quicker, a lot more smoother approach. And then we're going to grab some of the uh, calculation that we've got from the notes and see how well it compares against what it is that we're doing. In this example, I'm going to take you through doing the dog bone, but using the static structural. And in this case, using space claim. It may help for you to stop and start and record for things. I mean, um, for you to stop and start for what we're doing here. And the reason I've, I've done this is for you to be able to do that. So I can move relatively quick and I'll try and navigate to each step as to why I'm doing things. So you guys are clearly aware as to what I'm doing and as to why. So what we'll do is take this down, right down a little bit more, just so it's not too insanely on the missing. Um, okay, so to normal side, we've got our uh, overall suite here. I'm going to drop, drop. I'm going to drag and drop a structure, structural, static structural. Uh, like in our example, we we're using uh, the normal structural steel, so I'm going to stay with that. Uh, however, this case, I'm right clicking. This case, I'm going to space claim. I'm going to use space claim in this case. Uh, I do remember the dimensions. Um, so we're going to just go with these dimensions, but just for completion, what I'll do, because I, I have them here, what we'll do is quickly take a look. So it's 162 by 35, 27.5 for a rad and 13 millimeter in width. Okay, so let's do this. So let's come across and this is your space claim interface. It's a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the uh, what will be top. So in this case, it will be ZX. I'm going to right click, view, and I'm going to go top. So this is my ZX claim. Now, what I'll do with this is dead straightforward. We we'll do line to line to line to line uh, to line to line. Yeah, you get the idea. To line and then to line. In this case, that's all I'm going to do um, because I'm going to exploit symmetry in this case. Uh, as we know, it is symmetrical, which is quite nice. And what I will do now is go dimension. And we know that the part itself is 20 millimeters. Let's just have a quick look. 20 millimeters. So I'm going to go 20 mil. Then I'm going to go dimension, and I'll go dimension, and I'll go dimension. Ah, oh, right, yeah, this is just because they're, they're leveled, so I don't need to. So it's already constrained, I should say. So if I go, let's just go uh, 10, should move with, as ever. Okay. And I almost need I made a mistake there, because it's 20 mil. Uh, so I did 20 mil then and left it. So I'm going to go dimension. Now, the distance to the midpoint of this joint is six and a half. So I'm just going to go 6.5, 6.5. Uh, overall distance across from there to there is 162. And this distance here is 35. And this distance here is also 35. So now what you should have, if you've done it right, is you should get that, which, uh, as we well know, has become the dog bone that we all know and love. <laughs> uh, so that's the central point here. And there's a few ways you could do this. Uh, there is a tangent arcs and there is, oh, there is rounded edges there we could do. In fact, I could try that. Is that going to work for me? So if I go, let's go 27.5. I'm giving I've not tried this way. No, that's actually not done anything right. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'll show you why in a moment. 
Uh, I was just seeing if that was going to work and that didn't work like I wanted it to. So then into my modifier, I got a mirror. So from my mirror, it wants to know the axes I'm using and then it wants to know what I'm mirroring. Um, if you didn't, if it was too quick, do hit pause, start again and have another look. So what we should have now, 20 mil, 13 millimeters in, in, uh, in, insert, 13 millimeters uh, central gauge and clamps 35 by 20. So we've got our overall piece now. Uh, what did you complain about with errors? Oh, no, because, yeah, that's fine. It's just because um, I I put on some of them things before and it's it's been like, oh, what are you doing? So this is the overall piece. And now this is a weird thing. So do bear with. When you extrude, you do what's called pulling. So I'm going to spin this up. And I'm going to come to my arrow and I'm just going to pull it. Now, in that, I can choose how side I want to go. Now, I know that my thickness in this case is going to be 7 millimeters based on the ASTM standard. So I'll go 7 and enter. So this should be 7. I'm just going to try that again, actually. Whoops. I'll try that again. Because I looked then and that looked to be a bit odd. 7. And there we go. So I confirmed that in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just saying, you're trying to extrude, and I've already extruded. Um, so we did have a member of staff at UCLan who uh, loved this. And I don't blame him, really. There's, there's bits to this that are, are quite nice. I do, do think it's quite nice. Um, I wouldn't really choose it as a, a, a mass production, a, a piece of software for... Uh, uh, engineering, but I think for something like this, it, it is, it, it's, it's great. So you'll notice there, I've just gone on the edge and I've just pulled it out and I'll go 27.5 and you go, wow, that was good. So let's do that again. Again, this isn't a fillet. This is a manipulation of nerve faces. So it's a bit different. So you'll notice there, it's giving me arrows. So if I go to the edge, it goes diagonal. So I'll pull that out and go 27.5. Spin that over, spin that around, whoops, whoops. Go here, drag that out, and go 27.5. Spin that out to here, drag that out, 27.5. And without further ado, we have our dog bone. So 27.5, 30 millimeter on the middle, and yeah, you know, it is there, so let's have a couple of tools. And you do. Dimensions. Uh, in fact, no, I'm just going to complicate things. Now. I'm not going to do that. So now what I want to do is, if you remember, so let me just call this back up. So let's go uh, Tin Eos Olsen 50ST. Uh, if you've never used one of these, tremendous bit of kit. Absolutely tremendous. Let's quickly call this up. See there, we've got the clamps. So what we know is these are the clamp points. So what we've got to actually do is put a piece of, uh, we've got to split the face. And splitting this is dead easy. So I'm going to go rectangle. I'm going to select this face. And I'm simply going to go uh, one there to there. And this system snaps quite, whoops, that didn't go right. Let's start again. This system snaps quite nicely. And why is that doing that? That is not what I'm after. Oh, that's, that's really, really annoying. Right, so let's just, I'm just going to pull this back off and I'm going to pull that back off. Now let's do this again. So I'm going to go this face and I'm going to go sketch. I had to just delete all that. I'm not sure why that was doing that, but um, we'll try this again. So I'll come from you to you. There you go. It, it was must have been because I had the other faces on there. Then you to you. So we've got these on here. Now all I need to do is go to uh, my design and go split. Done. So let's flip it over and do the same again. Uh, so I'll go sketch, sketch. I'm going to go on this face. And I'm going to go this point to here. And this point to here. 
And all I'm doing is just creating that overall place where the clamps would sit. So then I'm going to go design, split, done. And that's my geometry. So it is dead quick. And uh, as I was saying before, so many members of staff, they uh, have, well, one in particular really did praise this software. And at the time I was kind of like, really, is it that good? And when you do have a play around with it, you know, he did have a point. So I'm going to close that. And that's it. So let's move on. Let's, uh, we're going to use the same criteria as the last one. So let me just call this back up. And I'm just going to come to here and pop across. And there we go. So now uh, we're going to use the same criteria. In this case, we went for 20,000 newtons. So let's do that. So, uh, apologies, one second, it's still loading up, uh, bring you across. It's a matter of having two screens, you know, when, when something's loading on a screen that you're not recording, you go, oh, oh, damn, damn, what's going on there? Come on, here we go, right, let me try this again, so bring this, my goodness, give me a second, here it comes, there we go. So, we're now in the operational workspace. Um, I'm not going to insult anybody's intelligence. We're going to go straight to business. So I'm going to right click and go insert and I'm going to go sizing. I know that this face here, uh, this face here, this face here, and this face here could really do with a millimeter sign assigning to it. So let's just set that generate mesh. There we go. A little bit. I mean, even that's a little bit, uh, wide i mean i could probably go even tighter but let's just stay with that i mean arguably just look at the extra you know what i'm going to take the whole sample space i probably don't need to it's probably a little bit overkill so what i'll do now is again generate that mesh and three two one boom so there's a new mesh and i'll right click insert and we go fixed you and you and all that's doing is holding it it is the clamp fixture i'm going to right click insert force you you see i can do this i can do this in classroom it's a bit tricky because you've got to pause make sure everybody's okay uh, in this case if you're not happy you can just shut me up by hitting pause which from my perspective is quite fun so i'll go 20 one two three and uh we know in this case i was looking at uh, not equivalent stress, but I'm going to go normal stress. So let's just solve that normal stress. So let's go. Mm -mm -mm. And there's our normal stress. So uh, in this case, okay, now I'm going to expand this. I want to see what's really happening around these key areas. And I think that the look at that as imagined look at that concentrated around there but really failure point is going to occur here so i'm guessing that our result is going to be around i think it's going to be around 209 or three uh, two three one at that point where it's going to fail which will be around here so um what i'm going to do then is pop you across to uh, to here like that and then i'm going to stay with i like to stay with the notes so at least then you can see how i'm trying to formulate this so let's bring the notes across right so uh tensile to compression stress or in this case normal stress we're just going to calculate this out let's go twenty thousand, and in this case now this is pi r squared so in this case, this is because the thing was round, but we're not round in this case. We're actually 13 by seven because we need a cross section of that gauge. So um, we're going to go is equal to 13 by right, seven. Oh, 13 times seven. So it's 13 across and seven down to give that cross uh, cross a, moment, a second moment of uh, area. And now all we do is go insert 
and we're going to go u divided by u. So we get 219.78. Oh, beautiful. It is exactly what I'm thinking. It's here. And that's what you'd expect for it to fail in this area. And uh, that's a, just a, a straightforward uh, a verification. It would build up if it just kept elasticating. It would just keep building up in these areas. But uh, it doesn't. And you've got to remember that this is a static study. And that's really what you're going to get in that aspect. So if I just hit stop, what I've now actually got is a verification to show that what I'm getting in that X component, which I've got here, is what I'm predicting. And uh, my results do uh, correlate quite nicely. So um, that's probably really short. And I didn't want to grab it on forever. I didn't want like an hour long video. I just wanted a short thing to try and tie it off that dog bone. Because yesterday was a nightmare. Every single button didn't work. Things went wrong. You thought, you know what? Let's scrap it. Let's do this again. And I thought doing this this way would actually show you guys uh, a little bit more of an insight. And uh, so both groups, if you haven't, do take a look at this. If you have any questions, do get in touch. Send me an email, uh, post comments, uh, or whatever you need to see. Do reach out. This is the dog bone. This is based on the ASTM D638 standard. And I, am, I use the Tinius Olsen 50ST. Thank you again to Tinius Olsen for sponsoring all uh, coordinations on projects. And um, yes, this is using ANSYS and this is a nice, easy verification of a solid based dog bone. If there is any other burning questions, do reach out, let me know. This, is, as I said, this has only been 17 minutes and uh, we were able to solve it so quick. Imagine if I'd have done this first yesterday, um, for everybody, uh, thank you for bearing with me as I just sorted that out. But yeah, hope you found it useful. And if I don't speak to you sooner, um, have a great weekend and um, have a good day. Other than that, thanks. Speak to you all soon. Thanks, guys.